everyone, welcome to Just Invest Today, and today we're talking about Jeremy from Financial Education. We want to know, how did Jeremy become a millionaire, right? Let's see if we can read this article, find some tips on how to reach our goals, because you know, we want to be financially free, we want to be a millionaire just like Jeremy, so... I just recently stumbled on this article, September 16th, 2021, and we want to understand, see, give us any insights on how to become a millionaire. So, a 25-year-old built a six-figure stock portfolio on a gas station manager's salary by following four rules. So, we got to go over these four rules. Let's learn some secrets, some tips, and let's get the ball rolling. So, Jeremy didn't always have a clear path for his future. His early childhood was marked by poverty with his family depending on food stamps and government assistance. At 12, his dad moved the family to Arizona where he started a small pool business boosting them into the more middle class income. I thought we were rich then. He started at Walgreens a while later, now earning eight fifty an hour. He was looking for ways to grow his money. Real estate was completely unrealistic because it had no money or experience in that. And he says, but the stock market was intriguing. And that's so true, guys. Like, when you think about it, the stock market is, like, 10 times easier than the real estate market. Like, you can find these wonderful businesses to invest in, and you don't even have to do a thing. You can just let these amazing CEOs do all the work for you, all these customers, all these um, employees. They're doing the work for you, guys. And you just have to sit back, just put some money into this company, and then let it run. While if you were a real estate manager or you own property, you have to go back and forth. You're not getting that much money. Sometimes, like, you have to deal with all the um, the drama with in case anything breaks or just making sure someone's always in the property. Like, that's just a hassle. So, the stock market is honestly, in my opinion, 10x better uh, than, the, than the real estate market. Tell me what you think about that. Do you think the stock market is better than the real estate market? Which one's better, in your opinion? Guys, can you like this video? Subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be providing a lot of content. Leave a comment down below so I can see that you subscribe. Um, by the time Jeremy was 25, he built up an impressive stock portfolio. At this point, he was out of college working as a manager at Quick Trip Gas Station, spending his evenings and time off reviewing his portfolio and individually picking stocks. The work paid off according to documents reviewed by Insider. His account at the time was valued at just under 200000 So this is really interesting. Like, how was he able to honestly get a $200,000 portfolio at 25? Because he said he grew up in poverty. And he wasn't, he literally wasn't at Walgreens for that long, making eight fifty. So how did he build this this two hundred thousand portfolio did he just hit the jackpot on a few stocks like what happened during that time to accumulate two hundred thousand dollars at 25 like how many people can say that they have two hundred thousand dollars at 25 years old and like and that's with no help and he's working he's going to school so he's probably not working as many hours plus he has all that student loan debt so it's just like what like that is that's really interesting. I read like I don't know how he did it, but two hundred thousand at twenty five. So you can just see early on his success. Because if you're able to build that much money, you have a nice business mindset and you understand uh, the power of saving money and having that uh, huge portfolio just growing already. He used free, inexpensive resources to develop his knowledge and learn how to evaluate companies. And yeah, man, people don't want to do the work these days people are just thinking that like can they read like two three books and then they know everything about investing man you really have to spend hours and hours and hours just reading researching companies reading 10ks like you have to do that groundwork like you're honestly like what Lee Lu says basically you are like a private investigator you have to go in and out you gotta know everything about like that company you're, you're investing in you gotta find the details, any like any bad stuff happening in the company. Like you're like a private investigator when you're finding these companies. And I really and I really like that kind of resonates with me to be honest, what Lee Lu said. 
Oh, two, anytime his disposable income increase, he invested in the stock market. And this is super key, man. You got to pay yourself first. And that's like a really important lesson that when you get your paycheck, instead of just like spending it, like just doing random stuff with it, like paying your debt off, like whatever, just put two, three hundred, four hundred dollars, just have that side and put it into your investments instead of just like paying um, off or spending on, on like wild stuff that you don't even need. Like pay yourself first and then the money you have left over, just use that for your groceries, your bills, whatever, and have all that things handled. So pay yourself first, which is really key. So that's what so that's basically what he did. He only had small amounts of money to invest, but I was doing it nonetheless. Walgreens wasn't hiring for any manager, but one day at a random gas fill up, he saw a sign in a quick trip window advertising an assistant manager role starting at just under 40,000. This was November 2010. I was turning 21 at the time, he says. I was excited. It was an exciting moment at the time after landing the job. He now had significantly more income to invest. Now I can get the ball rolling, he remembers thinking at the time. After his expenses, he had about 1000 to 2000 a month in disposable income to invest. And that's super critical, man. You got to save that money on the side to invest. Number three, he invested in fewer companies to keep a better track of his choices. And this is super smart. A lot of beginners really think they can invest in like 10 to 15 companies. So Jeremy doing this strategy is super important, man. Like when you think about it, if you do a deep dive on like six companies and you actually really, really understand it, that's really all you need, especially if you're working on the side, um, if you uh, if you have like a family, like if if you're like if you go out, you do other stuff. If you're in school, like there's so much extra stuff you have to do, and then keeping track of 15 companies, man, like that could be a lot of work, and you could probably screw up on a lot of those companies if you're not actually going in like depth with it. And he wasn't, and that's why having six companies is very smart on his part. And then look at the companies he's picked. Cabela's, a Bass Pro Shop, Monster Energy. How did he find, Mo like, finding Monster Energy is amazing. We know what Monster Energy did. It already 100 x easily in the past, like, 22 years. So he hit a jackpot on that, man. Probably that contributed, like, a lot to his success. Trinity Industries. So today I own probably 20 stocks roughly, but if you go back 10 years, I probably had anywhere from 3 to 6 stocks at a time. And I'm, that's really interesting because if he has so much success with 3 to 6, man, maybe that's the way to go, 3 to 6, especially when you do a huge deep dive. But on the other side of it, he has so much more money, so he wants to be more diversified. He doesn't have to take as much kind of like risk in his mind. And... Plus, he has so much more time to research companies as he probably doesn't work at Walgreens or any of those shops. He has all his time on just investing so and YouTube, which makes a lot of sense why he has, like, you know, more stocks and more time to do more research. The reason for this was simple. With limited time and desire to learn from his portfolio, fewer stocks were easier to manage. See? You're, able, you're going to be able to track them better and be able to learn from them better. As your wealth increases, you start becoming more diversified. Picking individual stocks successfully requires a lot of research. When you're working a full-time job or have other life commitments, you only have so much time to do research. <laughs> That's so funny. I called everything he just said. And the number four, he purchased stocks with a long-term profits in mind. And man, especially being young, like it's so hard to think long-term. And him doing that is was super important, man, because... If you're able to hold three to five years strong companies, the success rate of it actually going up and actually the business improving is a lot higher than buying a company for like expecting the company to go up the next year. Like no one knows if the company is going to go up the next year. Like who knows, man, because the stock market is so volatile at this time. So him doing that, thinking long term is is super key. I'm thinking about holding stocks for around three to five years at a time. That said, sometimes he'll sell earlier if he finds stocks he thinks will perform better. If a better stock comes along, I might end up selling the initial stock and reinvesting that money into the next stock. And that's super important. You shouldn't understand 
the companies you have. What's the story? Does this company still have a lot of potential to run in the future? And if you see a stock stagnant and you don't see any potential for the stock, yeah, sell it and buy another stock that's cheaper, more undervalued, with better potential, more success, low risk, and like with a high reward at the end of it. That is perfectly fine to do, man. So if you find those opportunities, you should definitely take it. The long-term strategy is extremely important to success, not just because of the benefits of holding stocks, but also for a mindset it offers him. The stock market is open Monday to Friday, and the stocks are moving all around. People get caught up in that, but you're investing in an actual business and an actual underlining company. Super key. People just think that you have stocks. It just goes up and down. There's no business under it. They don't even focus on the business on what it does. They just care about the price action, which is super, super wrong, man, because no one knows what the price is going to do, man, like in a year. Like, you don't even know what the price is going to do in like three months, six months, a year. So that's why the longer you hold these stocks, the better the stock will, is the, the stock will eventually follow that business improvement. So if the business is growing at 20%. The stock will eventually grow at 20% pretty much. But even if the business is growing at 20, uh, 20%, the stock might decrease by 10% because it's a short-term thing. It's only been three, four, or five months. And you don't know what's going to go on in that time and what's happening in the new cycle. So, yeah, he's like super key on that holding long-term and just, and just being patient, man. Being patient is like the key thing for success. So that's it for the article, guys. Tell me what you think about the video. Can you like it? Subscribe to my channel, and I'll get back to you in the next video. Peace!